Um, I work for Studley Castle Hotel for Warner Holidays. So we're going to cook some, some basic dishes, but today we'll start with doing bread. So, dead simple, really, well, saying simple, I haven't made this for about 12 years, so I'll do my best. So all, we, all I've done really is, um, is going to start to make a ferment. And that what I've used for that is flour, water and a little bit of honey, yeah? I've just mixed that all together in my tin and then I put it into somewhere warm. So we put it in our plant room upstairs, which probably known to you guys at home would be your earring cupboard or, or somewhere that's got a nice temperature to allow the yeast to activate the wild yeast and to ferment. And then I've left it there for two days and then what it should look like after two days is something like that. So you can see it's starting to bubble, which means it's starting to grow the yeast. And then I've, now I've left that for two days, what I'm going to do is I'm going to feed it again, put it back in the plant room for another day and then take it from there into that stages and that's what we call making a starter. And once I've made my starter then I should be hopefully in a position to go on to make my breads. So we're going to show you all the different stages of doing that. Um, and then hopefully at home night like, you can have a crack at making some bread without using the, fa the fast action yeast which is normally a lot lot easier to use but hopefully this will work out really well and when you do make it with this honestly the bread is really really good so here we go then so this is my um, ferment that I've been fermenting for two days um, and I've had it in the plant room which is our basically our big boiler room and I've just put that into my bowl with my spatula that is uh, into that I'm going to throw in another 200 gram of flour and also into that 150 grams in weight of warm water around about 30 degrees 28 degrees all I'm going to do is throw that straight in there give it a good mix in so it, cool, it all starts to form together hopefully you can see that I've got my wonderful tech guys over there showing me what to do and how to hold the, the, the pans and everything so you guys can see it so I'm just going to mix that all up nicely with my little spatula or you can use a scraper if you've got one at home so it's better a bit of kit. It doesn't have to be do a lot of work with it yet because we're not in the position where we're going to make bread at, yet, at the moment. That's going to be a couple of days away. But once you've got your starter made then it's just a case of feeding it and making bread every, every couple of days. But we'll go through all the all the stages with it on how to make it from this from this kind of um, dough. So I've got it all nicely together. That's it. I'm not going to do much more with that. I'm just going to stick on the door, pop it back into my pot. I cling film my pot. I'm going to stick it back in the boiler room for another 24 hours and let it ferment some more. There it is, straight in there. Happy days. And then what we'll do is we'll come back in a day's time and we'll go again with it one more time and then hopefully, touch wood, bearing in mind I've never made it with plain flour before, but I think it should be all right. It's obviously, I think the difference between plain and strong flour is obviously the strong flour's got a little bit more um, protein in it, so it's a bit stronger, yeah? Hello again. So, we're, we're back on with our bread making um, and what we've done with this, this is our um, ferment which has now had 36 hours up in the um, boiler room and as you can see it's nicely fermented and growing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going on to the final stages now before then, after that then I can start making the bread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 200 gram of this mix. Okay, so I've got 200 gram of my mix, my ferment. Put that straight in there into my bowl. Get it all in. I'm going to add another 400 gram of flour, so that's doubling flour, and then the same weight of mix in warm water. Again, just below 30 degrees, about 28 degrees, um, straight into the mix like so. Just going to mix that all in together into a dough. I haven't got to do a lot of work with it at this stage because I'm still growing it at the moment but 
on the next time when I make the sourdough, that's when I have to get my um, sleeves rolled up and start giving it some to make a nice smooth dough. back in my bowl. I'll cover that and I'll take it back up to the plant room for another 12 hours. When I finish with that I'm going to bring it down, put it in the fridge for a couple of days, slow down the fermentation process and then after that I'll be ready to go ahead and start making sourdough. Right so we're back on making the bread again um, and what we've got here this is my starter which we started at the very start of it making and we've now let it grow. We let it grow in a warm environment then we brought it back, we added a bit more, then we um, put it back in the warm environment and then we put it in the fridge for a few days. So as you can see there, you can see it all starting to bubble and um, start to grow basically um, as I'm growing my wild yeast, which is just fresh yeast that's all around us. Um, so what I'm in the process now, I'm at the point now where I'm going to actually make a, make a dough together and then actually make the final proof and then hopefully bake the bread and we'll get this wonderful sourdough. Um, so, what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use half my starter and then when I've done with the other half, what I'm gonna do with the other half is I'm gonna refeed it. So when they say feed it, it's just basically, I'll, I'll weigh it, I'll have the same weight in water and then double in flour, mush it all together into a dough, put it back in the bowl, cling film it, put it in the fridge, just let it feed and let it grow. Um, this start is only, what, now nah, six, seven days old, but you know, I know stories of bakers having starters for 20, 30 years, and they just keep on using it. So, this is my bowl. I'm gonna put my flour, so I've got um, nearly 800 gram of flour in there. Um, I'm gonna use 650 gram uh, tepid water and 20 gram of salt. But I'm not gonna put the salt until right towards the end. Of the, um, of the process of uh, when I'm sort of kneading the dough together. Into that I'm gonna put half of this starter, which I know is 400 gram. Really sticky and, um, which is kind of cool really. Right, okay, so I'm just gonna tear that up in there. like so very very sticky it's pretty good stuff actually get that last bit out there perfect I'll put that to one side remember I'm going to refeed that get it back in the fridge and then hopefully I can just keep on making bread as much and much as I want I'm gonna get my water make a well in the middle straight in with my water going to mix that up into a into a dough it's going to go really really sticky and all that but don't worry about that because when I work it and then at the end when I add the salt it'll all come back into a nice dough so I've got it let's see there into a sticky dough like that don't panic don't worry think oh my god it's too wet it's too sticky it's all going to come down to working it next which is going to take about 10 or 15 minutes and a hell of a lot of elbow grease Right, just get my scraper, just put it onto a floured worktop, and then this is where the real hard work starts. I'm gonna work this now for about 10 or 15 minutes, yeah? And then it will come together like a really smooth dough. Right, so I've been kneading this. for about 10 to 15 minutes now. And what I'm looking for is something nice and smooth, a little bit elasticated, where we work the gluten. So it's ready then, for be the first proof. Because we haven't used um, fast action yeast or um, any fresh yeast, we've actually grown the yeast ourselves. The proving process is gonna be a lot, lot longer. 
so right, I'm happy with that now. It's nice and smooth, nice and silky. So I'm going to put that in my bowl. Actually, I'm just going to give it a little two seconds more, yeah? I'll tell you what, it's hard work this is. <laughs> I forgot how odd it is to, to knead a dough. It's one of the, it's the opposite to pastry dough, bread dough, is because this is the one you want to work, really want to work it. So it's coming away from the tabletop nicely. It's got a nice silky um, colour to it. So, put my bowl straight into my, um, into my bowl. And what I'm going to do with that, I'm going to put a damp cloth over the top and I'm just going to leave that to pre for about an hour, an hour and a half. Then I'll knock it back, I'll divide it and then I'll put it into my proving bowls, baskets. Um, and then I'm going to probably prove it for about 14, 15 hours um, until it at least doubles in size, hopefully. And then we should be ready to bake some sourdough. Here's my bread after about an hour and a half, my dough from a sourdough. So what we're going to do is just going to knock that back and then I'm going to boil it up, divide it put in two, um, two bowls, and then we're going to go for the long prove, which is going to be about, I would say, about 14 hours. It depends on the temperature and where you prove it, yeah? So I'm just going to quickly scrape her out. There she is. Perfect. That's looking the part, that is. Bit of luck. Right, just knock her back. Right, so... That's it, perfect. So I've knocked all the air out of that now. Cut her in half. Like a so. Just a little knead. Pull her into the middles, like so. Just pinch her up so there's no, no sight, no splits. That's, that's just how I want that one. Same with the second one. So, get my two bowls. Just going to line these with baker's cloths. Make sure you use a clean one. Goes without saying. Okay, so I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a seam side up because the bottoms then will be the tops when we come to baking. But before I do that, I'm gonna really give this a good coating in flour. Both of these. around the sides. Okay, that looks about right. Okay, so I'll get my doughs. Just nicely put them down, give them a little pat down. Same with this one. I'll cover these probably with a damp cloth. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave these to prove for probably about 14 hours. We're gonna find a nice place in the hotel with the temperatures about 20 degrees or whatever, anything between sort of 17, 22 degrees. Um, and let these lovely prove up, double up in size, ready to be baked. And um, hopefully we should have some nice sourdough, bit of luck, eh? So I've proved my sourdough for about 12 hours now, 14 hours. I've just turned her out and I'm gonna put her in the oven. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start her off on about 250, five minutes and I'll drop her down to about 220. Um, what you want to do with your oven, as soon as you open your oven, you put your bread in, give it a spray with some water with a, uh, a trigger scoop bottle, or, you know, luckily I've got a little hose, but just create a little bit of steam, yeah? Right, so 
Bread's out of the oven now. Hear that sound? Really, really tough on the top. This is what you want. You want it really nice and chewy and then soft in the middle. And then just to check the bottom is just to tap it and make sure it sounds hollow. If you've got that sound, then you're perfectly done, yeah? So what I'm gonna do is just um, be careful because they're hot. Obviously when they come out of the oven, I'm just gonna leave them on a the cooling rack there, let them cool down for an hour or so, hour and a half, and then I'll taste them and hopefully they're gonna taste beautiful, but we'll know in an hour, yeah? Right, so, bread's out of the oven. Probably had it on there for an hour and a half, let it cool down, everything. It's still got a nice little, um, you hear that? Lovely crispy top into it, you know, and um, hopefully it'll be nice and soft in the middle. So I'm gonna, oh yeah, that sound as it goes through. Oh, beautiful. So yeah, looks reasonably airy in the middle. Still got a bit of denseness, which you'd expect from a, from a sourdough. So you can eat this any way you want. You can eat it with butter, whatever, but I'm trying to be a bit, a bit good at the moment. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of um, salt on it, which is probably about as good as butter, I suppose, really, isn't it? All right, let's give it a taste then. Whoa. That's not bad, that. That's quite nice. Lovely and chewy around the edge with that lovely crispy top. Softy in the middle, but still got that denseness. Yeah, it's got a nice smell to it. Yeah, so the good thing about this is it's still got that little bit of denseness, you know. And I've made it with just plain flour, all-purpose flour. Normally, you'd always make this with a strong flour or a bit of salt, uh, spelt flour for it, or whatever, or even rye flour. So I've made it with just plain. Main reason for that is because, you know, it's very difficult at the moment to get the strong flours and the, the specialised flours. Um, but it seems to come out all right. And, oh, Overall, yeah, I'm quite happy with that.